I was never all that superstitious. From what I can remember, I always looked at life from a practical sense. I was always in the present. I liked my practical and re I liked my practicality and realism. It was my favorite part of myself. I had a passion for interior design and a home and home furnishings. I like to think of myself as an artist. When I was not at work, I was off I would often browse the internet. I had my own blog. I posted photos of my home and interior design and some of my artwork and interior designs my fr my friends made. We would often collaborate on home projects we were obsessed with. One day, I went to my local IKEA to get some inspiration for a home project. I often went to IKEA to browse and enjoyed getting lost in the endless hallways of rooms, each with a different setup to simulate my imagination. I often imagined what a furniture piece would look like in my home, although I didn't have much money and it would be cheaper just to make one. I came across something very old during my last visit to IKEA. It was not it was nothing much to look at. It was a vintage old high high back chair with a wooden frame and a and dull white cushions and the seat on the on the seat and the back. This was odd because IKEA didn't sell chairs like this. As for me, I had a modern taste. I never made or bought anything like this. I was curious and decided to get a closer look. It had a label. It was not specific, but at least it read the chair. No logo, no brand, no price, nothing. The chair. It did not look like it was very comfortable, but I was intrigued and decided to sit anyway. It was the most comfortable chair I had ever sat in in my life. I felt myself slowly mold into the chair, despite it being unusual. Since it was only a small wooden chair with uh, sewn-on cushions, I could feel my body growing more and more tired. I didn't want to fall asleep in the middle of the store, so I tried to get up. My body wouldn't let me. My eyelids were beginning to close, and I forced them open, but it was useless. I called for some assistance, but no one answered. In fact, no one seemed to notice me at, the, at all. I made another attempt to will my body out of the chair. My arms began t to shake as I pushed on, my, uh, on the armrest of the chair. I managed, I managed the strength to lift my body a few inches off the chair, but my fatigue got the best of me, and I slammed down on the chair, panting. I tried every possible, I tried everything possible to keep myself awake, but my eyes began to close without me even noticing. I caught myself just in time. My eyes closed for only a millisecond, but when I opened my eye again, I saw that only a few people left were left, security guards and janitors. They still paid no attention to me. My turn. I turned my gaze out the window and saw the moon and the empty parking lot. It was nighttime. The store was closed. I tried again to get myself out of the chair. I could not move. I screamed at the top of my lungs, which at this point was just a quiet cry. The janitor that was mopping the floor right next to me should have been able to hear me, but he remained unaware of my existence. The louder I screamed, the more tired I became, and I could feel my eyes closing again. There was nothing I could do. This time, it felt like more time passed than a millisecond, maybe a minute or two. But when I woke, there was no one. I looked around, all the furniture items had vanished apart from the chair I was sitting in. It was just a big empty warehouse. I looked out the window. The moon and sky and parking lot had gone. My view was pitch black. It looked as if the windows were blacked out. At this point, I couldn't scream. I could barely move my mouth. 
I noticed a tingling in my lower back. I couldn't do anything but sit there in utter discomfort. I didn't want to close my eyes again. The discomfort only grew worse. The tingling was felt under my arms and all through my back. My shirt felt as if it were if it were attached itself to my skin. My eyes would not close now. The discomfort grew on and on and on until I finally drifted to sleep once again. I awoke to find that all the lights had gone out. I felt like I was being watched. I could no longer turn my head. A shiver ran down my spine and throughout my entire body, my mind ran rampant. I could not rationalize this utter terror that was the only thing running through my head. I heard a small scampering I heard small scampering movements. I saw in the darkness what looked like a man standing there and staring at me. What was going on? The last time I fell asleep, I was not even aware I had drifted out of consciousness. But when I woke, I found IKEA's structures crumbling and the walls and the floor had faded to a dirt yellow. There were various cracks and holes in the building, and out the window was the sun blaring at what seemed like triple what it normally emitted. There was no items on display, but there were a few shopping carts and that were knocked over in gathering dust. I sat there in the chair for what seemed like weeks. There was no pain, but I knew I was being tortured. There were all kinds of torment out there. I could not move. I could not turn my head. I was completely paralyzed. The only thing I could feel were the shivers and increasing pressure. All I wanted, I wanted to fall asleep, but I could not. I wanted to get out of the chair, but I could not. I sat there. My mind was racing, but my body lay completely motionless. The utter lack of motion was torture enough. And by the second, it just got more uncomfortable and more stiff. Eventually, after what felt like months, I managed to make a slight head turn. It turned into shaking. I could feel my body getting heavier, and I felt the legs of the chair shaking. They began to crack, and after three hours of uncomfortable shaking, the chair broke. My eyes closed for an instant. When I opened, I found I was on my back on the store at the very instant I had sat in, on the chair. Everyone was staring at me. The chair lay there, its four legs snap off, and the back was cracked. I could move again, and I could see an irritated young employee approaching me. Excuse me, sir. You're going to have to pay for that, he told me. Uh, yeah, of course, I stammered. I looked at the tag again, and this time it read Late 19th Century French Art Nouvelle de Lee White Armchair, $2,250. I went to the counter and paid with my credit card. I asked him if he could throw the chair out for me. I told him that since it was broken, I had no use for it. He agreed. I raced out of the store. I did not look back. I abandoned my car. I walked. I did not want to sit down at all. I tried my best to make sense of what had just been what I had just been through. It was too vivid for a dream. Yet since I broke the chair, it was it's like nothing had happened. I found myself shaking still. I decided to stop for some caramel, chamomile tea for my nerves. I wanted to call my friends and tell them everything I had been through, but I knew they wouldn't believe me. I knew of sleep paralysis. I researched the symptoms. They matched what I felt during the time in the chair, but there was nothing on the internet that could explain the eyes nor the changes in landscape between sleeps. I had my car towed. I lived relatively far away. It was a long walk home. I was beginning to tire out. By the time I reached my neighborhood, it was dark out. I wanted to believe that it wasn't true. I wanted to rationalize, but that was no longer possible. I came across my friend Simon's house but and decided to go for a visit. Simon let me stay at his place for the night. 
I just told him that my car slid into a ditch and had to be towed, and that was way, and that I was way too tired to walk any further. Simon advised me to sit down, but I had refused. Simon said he had to run to the store to buy some wood for a project. I did not want to be left alone, but I told myself it would be fine. If I did not sit down at all, I pulled, I pulled out my computer and decided to check my blog. It did not, I did not know what I was expecting, but I always like to check. I saw a post I had never made before. I saw a post I had never made before. It was a photo of the chair. You know which one I mean. There was a caption. A union. An antique French armchair. So cozy you will ever be able to get up. You will be so comfortable you will lose track of time. I froze up. Closed the lid of my laptop and decided to go to bed. I was up... I... I was upstairs in the guest room. I was still quite paranoid and afraid to rest, but I was growing more tired by the second, and maybe some rest would do me some good. I guess the guest room didn't have a bed at all. It was a vintage high back chair with a wooden frame and dull white cushions on the seat and the high back. I was too tired to resist. That was where that, that is where I am now. It's been three days. Though time is hard to tell. Simon probably thought I had left and returned to his house and I would return to my house. As he came into my new room many times now and hasn't noticed me. I know I will fall asleep soon, but I can feel myself growing more and more tired every time I press the a key. But I had to get my message across. You never know what can happen in life. You never know what to trust. If you take a seat, you may never get back up.